This is Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse uh, Second Second Thessalonians chapter two verse eight. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Shalom, giving all the praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba Hashem, Rachak, Wadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace and, peace and blessings to the elect. Yeah, this is going to be a very short video. Just want to uh, do a lesson on uh, if any of you have heard about the story of John Gruden, or if you know or watch football, you would know who John Gruden is. He's a famous football coach that played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, won a Super Bowl with them. And within these last couple of years, he's they brought him back to be coach for the um, for the Raiders or whatever. And apparently, uh, something happened in the past where he sent a bunch of emails uh, to certain individuals, and some of his emails had what you would call derogatory terms that was said about certain people, and it's being brought up now. These things that he did about ten years ago, I believe it. They said ten, maybe eleven years ago. <clears throat> the uh, the things that he said and the things that he said wasn't good you know according to Esau standards and uh now it's being brought up and now he's uh you know he's he resigned from being a, a coach in the NFL I guess the the heat or the pressure was too much for him that he couldn't stand it and you know uh he just resigned well not just resigned but a couple of days ago maybe about a week ago however long it's been resigned from being uh the Raiders coach he's no longer the head coach for the Raiders now and the lesson I want to do around this was the fact that you know what we're seeing happen to John Gruden is the same thing same thing that we're ha seeing happen to Esau that's why I brought out Thessalonians then shall that wicked be revealed because all although you have done all your wickedness years ago which you're still doing your wickedness now but although you know people will bring up slavery like oh slavery happened so long ago let's just forgive and forget but the Lord has not forgiven, and the Lord has definitely not forgotten what you have done to his people. And everything, just like John Gruden, the things that he did about 10 or 11 years ago is being brought back up against him now. It's the same thing that's happened to Esau Edom, which, or should I say, has been happening to Esau Edom. The things that you have done in the past and the things that you continue to do to this day are being brought up. Uh, I forgot what that precept is, but how this uh, hidden things of Esau searched out. So all your wickedness that you've done and who you are and what you stand for is being brought up. So I'll bring out this precept. This is Psalms chapter 50 verse 20. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thy own mother's son. Right. Because remember, Esau uh, came out of uh, Isaac and Rebekah. And Jacob and Esau are brothers. So you slander your own mother's son. And that's what it tells us in Revelation. That, you know, uh, he that accuses his brother day and night. Roughly paraphrasing. So here it is, you you know, you slander your uh, your own mother's son. Your own brother. You know, here it is, you promote wickedness on the earth, but yet you go and accuse us to the Most High, but yet it's you that's uh, promoting the wickedness on the earth. Verse 21, these things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Right, so the Most High hasn't, you know, chastised you or gotten at you for touching him or for touching his people. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such as, such as, such and one as thyself. But I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. And that's what's been happening for the past uh, couple of years now that you've seen uh, beginning with the Apostle Elders of Great Millstone and the men that have come in this truth throughout the years. That's the Lord setting us in order. Excuse me, Salakia. Right? And Esau Edom thought be because, you know, destruction didn't come swiftly upon him or nothing happened that you thought that the Most High was cool with you. Nah. The most I just biding his time. He's just letting you build up that, you know, build up that resume. So when he comes down on you, he has every reason to come down on you. The most I has been waiting since the time of Cain to come against you. But most I just been letting you build up that, that uh, resume, uh, so to speak. Uh, I'll read that again. 
but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes, All right? And that's what the Lord has been doing with the, uh, beginning with the apostle, that was the great millstone. And like I said, the men that have come in this truth, he's setting us in, or, uh, in order before your eyes. You know, that exceeding great army from Ezekiel 37 chapter. This is Zechariah chapter 2, verse uh, 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath the Lord sent unto me, a uh, socket, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. Right? And the Lord is bringing us into remembrance of the things that Esau, Edom has done, the wickedness that you've done. The Lord has not forgotten about what you've done to his people. The Lord made a promise. The Lord uh, swore and will not repent. So the Lord has made a promise to the nation of Israel, but has also made a promise to you, Esau, Edom, that he's coming for your eyes. And he's also coming to deliver his elect. And Lord's will be, be, we be a part of that number. So the Lord has not forsaken his people. Not everybody can be a part of, you know, the, the chosen or whatever Christianity wants to call it. You know, the Lord is only dealing with the elect. And the Lord's going to uh, judge two thirds of his people. And the Lord's coming to destroy your kingdom that you have built up. The place that you've lived deliciously in. The place that you thought that, you know, the glory of the Chaldeans. The place where you thought that, oh, uh, your kingdom will go on and live on forever. But no, the Lord's coming to destroy it. Let me get this just to prove, uh, to add on to the point. This is Obadiah 1 and 12. Yeah, I'll start at 10. Obadiah 1 and 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. Right? Because again, just to add, uh, to prove the point of this video that, you know, just because you've hidden the, the, hidden the secrets of what you've done or you've put that vibration out there for our people to forgive and forget, doesn't mean that the Lord forgave and forget at all. You know, our people want to be stupid and forgive and forget and forgive and forget you, uh, forgive and forget and, you know, uh, join hand in hand with you. Fine. But the Heavenly Father, Yahweh Bashem Asha, has not forgiven and forgotten and he does not want to join hands with you at all. He's going to repay you for the evil that you have done. Right. And that shame shall cover thee. That's why if you I've read a couple of articles where they're trying to take slavery out of school, they don't want to teach that anymore. That's why they're pushing that you know, alphabet community stuff in the schools now because they're trying to take out that slavery that was taught in uh, in schools because you're ashamed of what you've done because you know you got to get pay, uh, you, um, there's payback for that. There's recompense. Verse 11, in the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away the captive, a uh, socket, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou was as one of them, right? So in the day that uh, the Babylonians, 586 BC, came down and destroyed Jerusalem, you was also along the Babylonians as well. As it's going to say, yeah, thou was as one of them. So like, yeah, thou was as one of them. So you was also there uh, forwarding the affliction upon us. And the Lord has not forgotten that at all. You thought that when that day happened, oh, yeah, let's join unto the Babylonians and let's also afflict Jacob. No, the Lord has not forgotten that. Even back in the book of Numbers, I was just recently reading, the Lord didn't forget even that when you uh, didn't allow us to go through the land of Edom to, uh, you know, to sojourn, to pass through. You came against us with the sword. You came against us with a mighty army. The Lord didn't forget that. Moses was very generous to you as well. Moses was like, look, even if any of us drink of the water or if any of the cow drink of the water, we would pay you for that. Just let us pass through to the king's highway. But you didn't even allow that to happen. That's how much you hated us. The Lord didn't forget none of that. Our people may want to forget, but the Lord didn't. Verse 12, But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day that their destruction, in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of uh in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, nor laid hands on their substance in the day of calamity. 
neither shouldest thou have. And see, I love Obadiah so much that you just keep going. I want to stop there, but let's just keep going. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of, of his that did remain in the day of distress. And this is all the wickedness that you've done right here in the Bible that our people just look past. But no, the Lord has opened up our eyes to see it and bring it out and expose you for the wickedness that you've done. No matter how long ago this was, the Lord is bringing this uh, to pass now. The Lord is bringing this back up now. I'll keep going and maybe this will be the end of the video. Uh, for the day of the Lord, for the day of Yahweh Bashim Yasha is near upon all heathen, as thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall re thy reward shall return upon thine own head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink, and they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been right. Same way we had to drink the cup of slavery. Now it's your turn. That's uh Revelation at thirteen chapter verses uh, ten. Uh, verse 17, but upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance, and there shall be holiness, and the house of Jacob shall possess their possessions, right? So you're our possession, and now we're going to possess you, because you, you right now are possessing us, but there's about to be a flip, there's about to be a change very soon, a change in power. Verse 18, and the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame, and the house of Esau a stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for Yahweh Bashem Yahweh has spoken it. Right, so for all the wickedness that you've done, for all the evil that you've done to us, and continuously still uh, do to this day, and you try to fight against the Lord's uh, prophets, you know, by you know, um, by sending your agents against us, like Volcab Malone, and doing all this wickedness, sending the FBI agents to frustrate our cause, though you can't, you know. You can't break this thing. You're not going to be able to defeat this. This is of the Lord. This is not of man. Lest happily you uh, be f uh, fight against the Most High. You see, you're a very carnal man. You think by frustrating us and doing all these evil things that you know, you're going to be able to break this. This is not. This is not your little, you know, little things where you infiltrate and you send your little spy agents or whoever to infiltrate something, and you'll be able to, you know, take it over from the inside and break it down. Nah, you can't come into the Lord's council, man. You can't do that at all. You you can't stand within the Lord's council and think that any of the angels is going to turn on the Most High or any of the men of the Lord is going to turn on the Most High. Nah, it ain't going down like that, homie. You gonna it's recompense is coming for with the things that you have done. So when you try to make us stubborn, when you want to end us and make a, make us a no people, the Lord's going to make you a no people. Right, and that's it. Just want to, I'll end it there. But I pray that this video is edifying. Just again, the point is that just like John Gruden's, all his dirty secrets have been, uh, are coming back to light, is the same thing with Esau Edom. All his dirty secrets and his dirty laundry is coming out to light. And the same way uh, John Gruden couldn't stand the heat and now he resigned from uh, his high position, his NFL coaching thing, is the same thing that uh, what the Most High is going to do uh, do to Esau Edom. He's going to resign you from your high position. You're no longer going to be so-called head coach of uh, of the world anymore. You're not going to be the rules of the earth anymore. The Lord's going to take you out of pos uh, out of your position and put us on high. It's our turn to rule. It's our turn to be at peace now. It's our turn for the kingdom of heaven. You've had your little heaven. You've had your little, you know, slice of the pie. Now it's time for us to have the whole pie. One give all the praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rachak Radash, Shalom.